Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kathy. Today I'm going to be showing you a quick video on coloring the face with Copics and I should say ahead of time I haven't actually officially taken a course or anything on how to use Copic markers. Most of it has been self-taught and just watching videos I guess. So, so what I'm going to do is just walk you through some of the um, ways that I color with Copics and then hopefully there will be some tips that will be helpful to you. So I'm just going to zoom in the camera and this image is called Bridesmaid Tilda and it's a Magnolia stamp so you can go to Magnolia Stamps US I think it is and you'll you'll find out where you get you can see where you get these stamps. So for the actual Copic markers I am going these are my go-to um, markers that I use for Caucasian skin. So I'm going to be using E11, E02, E00, and R24, the cheeks. And there's so many ways that you can color with Copics. There's really not one right or wrong way. Um, you know, some people like to start lightest to darkest and other people darkest to lightest. I tend to start with the dark, I go light, but then I kind of go back and forth a little bit after that. So um, I'm just, I'm going to start with the E11. And what I'm going to be doing is just outlining, um, sorry, that won't focus. I'm just going to be outlining where I want the dark um, parts to be. And I tend to use the brush tip. So basically what I'm going to be doing is just putting a line around the crown of her hairline here and I'm going to be acting as if the light source is coming onto her like this so this right side of her face is going to be a bit darker so I'm going to be drawing in a bit thicker line on this side of the face and then this this side is going to be a little bit thinner so basically what I do is I just I basically outline the image and then her neck is there and I'm just gonna because the neck piece is so small right there I'm just gonna fill it all in with the E11 if there was more space then I'd probably use the E11 and the E02 but in this case there's not a lot of space so now I'm going over I'm going to be using my EO2 and in this case I'm going what I first do is I lay down the color like ahead of like where I just put the E11 and then I'm going to go back and blend in the lines so I'm just putting the color down like that and then I'm going to be going in and it's with small circles so what I'm doing here is I'm going to be going in circular motions like basically over top of the E11 to kind of blend those two colors together but I'm being careful not to go too high towards the airline the hairline because if you do the um, Copic markers are quite wet and it's going to start bleeding up into the hair so my basic my tip for this part of the my tutorial is just that you want to be very light-handed and you want to just go quick you want to go quickly in small circles kind of between the two colors so especially when you're going to be coloring near the image where it goes like near the outside of the image you don't want to like the color to bleed onto the white cardstock there so that is the E02 and then with the, the E00 which is my lightest color I basically just can be filling in that middle part and then I'm going to be again concentrating on going in those small circles between the E00 and the E02 and you'll just like you'll notice when I first put the color down there was quite a dramatic difference between the colors but you just keep going over it and you're gonna see that they kind of start blending together and with this lighter color I hardly ever go into the E11 like where I'd originally put the E11 down because um, it's gonna take the color away and so you don't want to like take away the um, you know that kind of shadowing because that's what I'm doing it's creating some shadows with her like her bangs and stuff so that is I'm pretty happy with that but if you feel that the colors are still not quite blending together and you want there to be less of a uh, um, a change between the colors what I would do is just go back in with the EO2 and I would start you know adding in a bit more color blending those two together 
I would just lay down that first and then I'd take the EOO and I'd go right over it right away and it kind of helps blend them together a bit more like that. So on the Magnolia stamps, um, I love how they have the little kind of freckles <laughs> and that tends to be where I lay down my, my cheek color. So I'm just going to put some, this is R20. So on this side, it's, um, it's there, and then there's just going to be a little bit of cheek showing on this side. So, and in this case, I'm happy with the fact that the R20 is um, not too bold. If, if I felt it was too bold, then I would go in with probably the EOO, and I would, um, you know, try and blend the colors again. But that is sort of, so far, what it looks like. And I'm just, I've noticed, like when you kind of hold it up close, like right here, I just want the colors to be a bit more blended, like near her chin area. So I'm gonna take the E02, and I'm just gonna, again, do those small quick circles towards there so that it can kind of blend it a bit better. And then having done that, I wanna add in the E00, the E00 again, and kind of blend those the colors together. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to her arms. Um, so basically, you know, the light source is again coming this way. So um, I'm going to, you know, under, usually where her dress is hanging, it's gonna be a bit darker under there because it's gonna create a shadow. And then on this side of her arm, it's gonna be a bit darker. So again, I start with the E11, and then underneath, you're not really gonna have light right under there. So I'm just gonna put some E11 under there. And then take the E O O. And usually when I'm doing the arms, you know, depending on what the size of the image, I don't always put all three colors, like the E11, the E O O, and the E triple O. I sort of just, like in this case, I'm going to add in the E O O, and I'm using those small circles to kind of blend along the line where the, I put the E11. And then maybe right here, I'm just going to add a bit of, like the E triple O, just to like lighten up her arm on that side a bit. There won't be very much light because technically the light source is coming from there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And then now I'm gonna move on to her legs. So this one, there's flowers hanging down. So I'm just gonna use the E11. And again, I always use the E11 near the fringe of the dress because I feel that that's gonna be where it's going to be a bit darker. They're going to cast a shadow on her legs. So, and then I'm going to be doing it also around the sock area. Like that. And then I'll go to my E02. So that was the E11, and then I'm going into my E02, and I'm just going to fill in the rest of her legs there. Okay, and I'm going to go back in with the E11 because I want to create a bit more shadow. This E11 is actually drying out a little bit, so I'm not getting as much color payoff as I could be. I'm actually going to do a Tip Tuesday video where I show you how to refill the, the Copic markers, so watch for that. Um, and you can see how I um, refill the the um, Copic markers. So that was the E11 and then I'm just going to go back in again with the E02 and just really lightly blend that line in. And that's it. So I hope that that was helpful um, and I hope that you got some tips from coloring the face with Copics. Um, I do have on my Pinterest page, I do have a Copics um, board and I have a lot of different um, formulas for kind of coloring skin that I've you know, found on Pinterest. They're not mine or anything. Um, so there's lots of ideas for coloring different skin um, types like um, East Indian black, you know, Caucasian, and also for hair color and all the different sorts of things. So be sure to check out my Pinterest page because there's some really good charts on there that you can refer to and that's what I do. I refer to a lot of the ideas or colors combinations that I come up with. 
I get from those charts. So I'm going to be doing my next video on coloring her hair and her another video on coloring her dress. So be sure to check out those videos um, and thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting. Thanks. Bye-bye.